The exhibition Bloom for me is about a lot of things, but at the core of it is an exhibition about mourning. It's a exhibition about working and being alive in a moment where the fragilities of our own lives, of our institutions, of our political and economic systems are laid bare and having a kind of technological layer on top of that. One of the cornerstones that the exhibition is built on is a series of photographs of flowers and plants in bloom. Those are photographed with really high resolution cameras and then they're imported into a suite of artificial intelligence algorithms that we've developed in the studio that try to dissect those images into their component parts. Different textures in the image, different kinds of objects in the image, different regions in the image, and represent those differences in the image by assigning different colors to them. If you had told me 10 years ago that I would one day be making an exhibition that uh, was largely photographs of flowers. I would have looked at you like you were out of your mind. Um, <laughs> these are images and, and figures that are so predominant in the history of images and in art history. Flowers are highly allegorical. They've meant many, many things in many, many different eras and many, many different genres. But one of the things that they've meant is a reminder of the fragility of life and to me during this time that sense of fragility is so present that I found myself gravitating towards these kinds of images with these kinds of histories. Paradoxically, we're also living at a moment where we're seeing things like the rise of artificial intelligence, which to a large extent is about automating the interpretation of images. AI is about building applications online that are evaluating you, trying to recognize you, looking at things like facial recognition or that sort of thing, trying to look at things like your behaviors. What does that say about you? How can that information be monetized? The sculpture at the center of the exhibition is something called the standard head. And that is a model of a head that has never existed, but that was a mathematical abstraction that was meant to represent a standard head to create a kind of ground truth upon which facial recognition was built. So when we're looking at things like facial recognition, computer vision, artificial intelligence, we're seeing the establishment of norms, of classifications, of categories, and those norms, classifications, and categories always have a politics to them. Those classifications are being made by people who have economic or political interests. The question then becomes, what kinds of judgments are built into technical systems? Why are they made that way? Who are they benefiting and at whose expense do they come? I'm somebody who does not believe that technologies are ever neutral. I don't think that that can exist. There's a piece in the exhibition called We, dot, dot, dot. And this is looking at a specific data set that is used to teach AI how to read handwriting. The piece is based on a data set from the late 1980s where what the researchers did was have high school kids write out the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. And it felt highly ironic to me that this text, this declaration of public sovereignty, would then be used to create the means by which to ultimately surveil people. The geography of seeing is changing. The fact that we're not really traveling, we're engaging with other people and looking at things primarily through online media. How does that change what an art exhibition is? I wanted to ask what happens if you design an exhibition natively to be both viewable as documentation of sorts online as well as in the space. The octopus piece is a response to trying to think about this dislocatedness. Throughout the gallery, there's dozens of video cameras. All of those cameras are then streaming onto a web platform so that you as a viewer remotely can go and look at it and you can pick what camera you want to see the exhibition through. Now there's another thing that happens when you go and you're looking at the exhibition online, you can give the octopus apparatus consent to use your webcam. And when you do that, your webcam will take your image and will stream it into one of four monitors located in the exhibition. And if you're somebody looking at the exhibition in person and you look up, you will see the faces looking down on you 
of people who are looking at the exhibition online. These multiple dialectics of seeing, of remoteness, and of presence, and the different kinds of mediation and abstractions that happen in those relationships, for me, was the point of this exhibition. You're kind of pointing out the degree to which our interactions with each other have become part of a vast kind of planetary machine that is designed to extract as much value as possible from us and from the most intimate parts of our lives.